One area where we see retailers often stall in setting up a website for their business is in shipping cost, free shipping and what they charge for shipping would be in the situations where they do charge. So I want to go through a little bit about that, uh, talk a bit about the thinking behind the different approaches and share with you some insights I've seen from other retailers. So let's start with that, actually. I've looked at uh, a bunch of retailers who are selling, for example, Jelly Cat, really premium plush product. And they have free shipping kicking in at uh, one is at $75, several are at 100, a couple are at 120, uh, there's one at 150, there's one at 129, and one at $175. They're all what their free shipping kicks in at today uh, on their websites. If we look at cookware, you know, pots and pans and things like that, I looked at a bunch of websites and they range with free shipping kicking in at $100. 125, 130, 150, 175, and one was $195. Then I go and look at just general gifts, everyday kind of gifts, gifts that might be $200 price point or less. And there, there's greater diversity. Um, there's free shipping kicking in on some websites at $50, others at $70, $90, $100, $125. One was at 150 My point is, it's dangerous just to look at what other people do in terms of their free shipping trigger. And it's important to know that wherever you start with a free shipping trigger is probably not where you're going to be in six months' time. So just making a decision is a good step forward because you know you can change it very easily and it will affect the website instantly. The factors that play into uh, where your free shipping trigger might be uh, relate to what your gross profit is on the items that you sell, whether you've got capacity to carry some shipping cost within that, what the average price point is, what you're going to sell, um, and then the process involved for you in actually shipping, you know, um, what your shipping cost is, your picking cost, your packing cost, those sorts of things, and the services you use to do the shipping, whether it's Australia Post or some other service. That's why you've got to get some experience first to figure out where you're actually going to land for the long term within your business. And, you know, we say it often, launch early and launch often um, with a website. And what that means is start somewhere, get some experience, and then tweak or adjust your figures and your, your um, dial points, if you like, um, once you've got that experience with your particular website and the customers that you're going to attract. Everybody has to pay shipping. You know, you, you can't get out of it. There's no such thing as free shipping. Either you're going to pay for it by covering it in the costs of what you sell, or the shopper's going to pay for it by paying a shipping cost associated with it. Um, you know, we've got a bunch of websites connected to our own retail businesses. Uh, we've tried all sorts of things, landed in a number of different places for the different products we sell. We've got one, one website where every order has a shipping cost minimum of $12, unless the customer spends way, way, way above the average purchase for a customer on that website. So 95% of the customers pay this $12. We make money on some, we lose money on others, but it balances out. We've got another website uh, where our uh, free shipping kicks in at $100. That's a fairly new website for us, and we're just trying to build customer engagement. We thought $100 was an easy uh, entry point for that, and it's been fine. It doesn't seem to have been a barrier with us getting sales on that website. The critical thing is if you are sitting there thinking about what you should do about free shipping, uh, my advice would be don't talk to the web developer because they're not the retailer. They don't have the cost that you're going to have in shipping items. Uh, start somewhere. Just choose a figure. And if you're not sure, go with $100 as your free shipping kick in and see what happens. If you want to adjust it two weeks in, you can adjust it two weeks in and that change takes effect straight away. In terms of what you actually charge for shipping in the cases where you do charge for shipping, I think it's important to keep it very simple. Um, make sure that your customers understand what the cost is going to be. I've seen websites that will have five or six tiers of shipping. And, you know, I, I don't want to shop on a site like that because it's it can be confusing. And, you know, when I'm shopping at 10 o'clock at night, I just want it to be simple and straightforward. So tell me that you've got a flat, flat fee for shipping. I'm going to be okay with that. Um, and if you've got a free shipping trigger, I might chase that. As a shopper, that's not necessarily something that I'm interested in. I'm more interested in getting the product that I want. But there are going to be other shoppers, people I know, where the free shipping trigger is something absolutely that they will shop to. So know that in terms of how you price your products and how you price your different shipping strategies. Um, so in terms of actual shipping charges, I would say keep it simple. If you're going to have a couple of price points, have two. Don't have five or six. Um, and 
have it set at a reasonable level where you're covering your costs and people can see that you're covering your costs. You're not turning shipping necessarily into a profit center for your business. Um, shipping is not something to spin your wheels over. If it's a barrier between where you are today and getting your website live, make a decision, go with something, go with $100 free shipping and have maybe a base shipping cost of $15. Now, if you sell really big and bulky items and you think that's going to be too hard, well, again, come up with a figure, start somewhere, get some experience, and that experience will guide you on what to do next. Every website that we've been involved with uh, has different experiences with shoppers when it comes to shipping. And ultimately, what you do with shipping on your website is going to be based on your own experience. All we're providing in this video is a starting point so that you get over possibly a speed hump that you might have encountered that's delaying you getting your website live. So launch early, launch often, start somewhere with shipping and have a free shipping trigger, $100, somewhere that you can start easily. Uh, hopefully, that helps you take some next steps and get up and running faster. Thanks for watching.